Welcome everyone, in this video we are going to prove that the trajectory of a projectile is a parabola. So, projectile motion is a parabolic motion in case there is no air resistance. So, how can we carry out this proof? Well, let's start with the diagram first so that we can visualize what's going on. Perhaps we have a projectile here at coordinates 0, 0. And we fire it with an initial velocity of V0 and then angle with the horizontal theta. This is an initial angle. You can even call it theta not if you want, but I don't want to call it like that. Theta will be changing throughout the motion, of course. So what will happen is this will follow a trajectory like this one and it will fall on the ground at this point perhaps. Now, what I want to show is, I want to show that this uh, dashed red, red, this dashed red trajectory is a parabola. But how can we do it? I mean, what does a parabola mean? It means that there is a second degree term inside it and nothing higher. It can't be a cubic. There is just a second degree term at the highest term. But what should be squared then? Should time be squared? Velocity be squared? I mean, what are we exactly trying to get? And... It might be a tricky question, but I think if I make one addition to our diagram, it will be more obvious. So if I draw the corner plane like this, if I select my corners basically like this, then you might be saying, aha, I know what's going on. I want to show that y of x is a second degree. Okay, this is basically a graph of a parabola, I claim, in the xy plane. And if we can show that y of x is a second degree equation, degree function, let's call it function, then our proof is completed. The way I want to approach this problem is I will first analyze the motion in two separate directions. First, I will make my analysis for the x, then for the y, and I am going to combine my results to get the final result that y of x is a second degree function, so the trajectory of a projectile is a parabola, as I said, without air resistance. So enough said, let's get started. Let's assume that we are interested in this point, and it is uh, with name like this, x and y. So we can get our x coordinates since we start at zero. Our x coordinate is going to be our velocity in the x times the time. Notice that there isn't an acceleration term in this equation because in projectile motion, there is no acceleration in the horizontal. There is just a vertical acceleration due to gravity and we will account for it in our discussion of the y direction. So what is Vxt? What is Vx then? Vx is going to be our initial velocity in the x direction because it remains constant throughout the motion. And our x direction is like this. So this is the component of velocity that we want. And if we use trigonometry, we can see that that is V0 cosine of theta times time. Now, moving on with the y direction, we will have V0 y times time minus 1 over 2 g t squared. And you might be wondering where this equation came from. Uh, if you don't know this, I proved this. I derived this in a previous video. You can find it from the cards right now. And a couple of things that I want to mention here. V not y means the initial velocity in the y direction. And this negative sign is quite important because it is emphasizing that due to our coordinate choice, the gravitational acceleration is in the downward direction. It is always downward, but we chose the down, downward uh, direction as negative. So we should have the negative here. All right. Our acceleration is not g. It is negative g. There is a huge difference. So what is V not Y? Well, it is this component. This vertical component of our velocity, of our initial velocity. So it is going to be V not sine of theta. Right? Times time minus 1 over 2 G T squared. And at some point, I want to zoom out from calculations and think about what we can do to achieve our goal. Right now, we have x of t, we expressed x as a function of time, and we have y of t, we expressed y as a function of time. Our goal was to express y as a function of x. So what we can do is we can eliminate the t terms, the t factors in our y formula. 
And how can we do it? By solving for time in our x formula. So let's do it with green because why not? It turns out that time is equal to x divided by v naught cosine of theta. All right, and you can you can see where I am going with this. We will just take this time and substitute it here and here. It only has x in it as a variable. V naught and cosine of theta they are constants, so it will give us a equation for y just in terms of x. And I remind again, this theta, it is the initial theta. It is theta naught. You can think of it like that, in case I didn't remind that at the beginning. I just avoid writing the theta so that there is more space to work with. So let's go. We have y of x, as I said. We eliminated all the, uh, all the variables. We just have x right now. It is equal to v naught sine of theta, right, this term, times time. So instead of time, I am writing what was in red, x divided by v naught cosine of theta. We have our min minus 1 over 2g. So for t, we will have x divided by v naught cosine of theta. It is squared, so let's just square it. Then all x squared, v naught squared, and cosine squared of theta. Here we see a nice thing. We see that v naughts cancel and we have sine of theta divided by cosine of theta. That is by definition tangent of theta. So let me get our result more simplified. Y of x is equal to tangent of theta times x minus 1 over 2. 1 over 2. Well, let's write it like this. 1 over 2 v naught squared cosine squared theta we have g on the numerator and we have our x squared and look at this we are actually done we have some term some constant we have another constant and we have a x and we have a x squared term so we have expressed y of x as a function of x and we see that there is the highest power of x is a square. We have x squared, the second degree term, as our, our highest degree term. Which means that we are dealing with a second degree function. And the graph of a second degree function is a parabola. So, in short, we have shown that the trajectory of a projectile is a parabola when there is no air resistance. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, please write them in the comment section. I hope to see you in another video. Until then, take care.